Terry. Hi, I'm Josh. Josh, How's it going? nice to meet you. I love your JPL. Uh, I know what that is. Thank You're you. a scientist. I am. I I'm study. so excited yeah. to have a scientist in my van. Will you thank come you. in the van Absolutely, and talk to me? Absolutely, I will. About smart things. Oh, oh, I, I know <laughs> some smart things. I know oh. some dumb things too. Oh, oh. really? So tell me your story. Yeah, so I study global warming for NASA. Okay. I work at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory right there. I know what it is. I love that. <laughs> so exciting. I fly around in airplanes in Greenland okay. and I try and understand how the oceans in Greenland are actually melting the ice from below. Because as you know, the earth is warming up. Yes. It's getting hotter because of greenhouse mm -hmm. gases yes. that we put into the atmosphere. And as it does, the ice in Greenland melts and it raises sea levels all around the globe. Right. So what we're trying to figure out in my mission, which is called Oceans Melting Greenland, okay. or OMG for short. See what I did there? I see what you <laughs> did, pretty good. Uh, thank you. We're trying to understand how the oceans are affecting Greenland. We know that Greenland melts from the top because the air is warmer, but a lot of the ice in Greenland actually sits right in the ocean. So it touches the water. And as the ocean heats up, it eats away at the edges of the ice and makes the ice flow more quickly off into the ocean. And that raises sea levels all around the globe. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to sort out how much of Greenland is melting from the top versus how much it's melting from below. Why the fake news and the people who don't want to believe this? And do they really not believe it? Are they just saying that because they're trying to make money? Like, what is really happening in the whole area of people who just don't want to believe this? I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that, you know, our economy really depends on burning fossil fuels. It depends on pulling this fuel out of the ground, burning it, and sending it up into the atmosphere. And when people's jobs depend on that, it's hard for them to believe that it's bad for the planet. I think a lot of people come from it from that angle, but of course, there's a lot of money still in the ground. And if you're an oil company, you, you look out there and you just see this, uh, this money in the ground that's there for the taking. There's a huge financial interest in keeping things the way they are and burning fossil fuels. And to pull people away from that is just really, really tough. And as far as what can people do, I think the most important thing you can do, honestly, is vote. Because we can't do it alone. We have to have our governments help us, and we have to make laws that push us away from fossil fuels and bring us closer toward renewable energies like uh, sun, solar, wind, geothermal, waves. There's tons of them out there, and we know how to get that energy we just have to start moving our resources in the other direction. So we should definitely do everything we can personally, but the most important thing you can do is tell your elected leaders this is what we want. I find reasons for hope too, actually. Okay, that uh, I want to hear. Yeah. I want to hear the hope. <laughs> you know, I mean, for example, California has one of the greenest energy grids in the country. We are starting to generate more and more of our power from solar and hydro and other things that are renewable and we're using less fossil fuels. And the city of LA has pledged to sign on to the Paris Accords. And so have hundreds of other cities across the United States. The only place we're really struggling is at the federal level. Right. And there we're kind of moving backwards. But right. other countries are doing things too. I mean, China's making solar panels faster than anyone else in the world. Right. They're starting to move their own economy towards greener pastures, okay. so to speak. And lots of countries are doing that. It's a good deal. I mean, it's a it's a great way to get energy, and there's jobs in if you switch. It's just too. the switch. It's, it's the, the switch, switch part. It's That's the right. switch part that nobody right. wants to do because right. there's like pain, and it's like going on a diet or yeah. something like that. It's like you don't see the results immediately. You got to exercise and not right. eat certain things for like a while right. before you see the benefit, and nobody wants to sit through that uncomfortable time to make the switch. And you know, the other thing I would say is don't blame yourself for it. You know, yes, it's all of us. We all have Because I am blaming myself. I know, but you should I be, mean, because I do yeah. some stuff, but I think all the time I think I don't do it. Like, I, I don't use water bottles a lot, but we have plastic water bottles here today. I feel yeah. bad about that. Right, but I mean, you know, 
it's not just your choice. I mean, companies shouldn't be able to sell you a water bottle if you can't recycle it easily or reuse it. Right. You know, you have to build it into the system. You're not going to change the whole economy because you recycle. Right. You know, you should have to buy things that are, you know, easy to recycle or renewable right. or easy to rebuild. As, you know, a smart scientist person <laughs> who knows all this knowledge and can see that we're on a disaster train, what defines a good life? Like, how do you how do you be a good person and have a good life in this world where there is so many big things that feel daunting and depressing and out of our control? Well, I would say a couple things. One is try to make good choices that make you feel better about yourself, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> That's kind of true in everything, right? Yeah. And talk about it. I mean, part of getting our country to move to a greener economy is talking about it. I mean, that's how you get the attention of politicians and lawmakers. And it's not just people in Washington. I mean, there's you have city council members yeah, that represent yeah. you. You have state uh, government. You know, you have like you're saying, exactly. Los Angeles, California. Absolutely. They're doing a better Absolutely. job than the and federal they, government is. They really, they really are working hard at it. And and that's a big that's a big part of it because there's a lot of people out there who are uh, who are creating wrong messages. Mm -hmm. The fact is that there's a lot of people who want to say global warming is fake. They have an interest in it and, and they literally send out messages. I get emails almost every day from people who write made up news stories to make it sound like there's no global warming. So Why? What's the benefit? They often have uh, financial interests tied to the oil industry. You know, They often are financed by think groups or other folks that uh, that are working for the oil industry. So they may not be directly working for Exxon, but there's, they're getting money out of the oil industry and they're literally paid to create fake <laughs> messages. And I see them all the time. And it confuses people. I mean, it it, it's working. It does, it's, yeah. It's a campaign that's working. I had written a paper that had a very surprising result and um, Rush Limbaugh talked about it on the news and uh, he, he called out my name and the two or three other people that wrote the paper and he said climate scientists had no idea this was going to happen and they really have no idea what's going on and he said to overturn the world economy based on the musings of a few idiot leftist scientists is just stupid and that's what global warming is actually all about wow so my wife actually <laughs> oh my god uh, uh, as a as a as a birthday present she had business cards made with my job title as idiot leftist scientist. Oh my so, god. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, I'm super glad that I've had an idiot leftist scientist in my van. That's the most <laughs> amazing blessing ever. Oh, thank you. It's a huge you honor. You are for anything me to be here. but Thanks. an idiot leftist scientist. That's so it's just even the name calling, by the way, you know what I mean? Like, what does that even mean? Yeah, I mean, you know, in a way it was sort of a badge of honor. Yeah. A lot of yeah. my colleagues were horrified. You know, I, I would tell this story to my colleagues and they would just turn pale. It's an opportunity to tell people what's really going on. You know, so a person like Rush Limbaugh calling me out, uh, I, I get to respond. It's and so to <laughs> say, just to that, yeah. he called you an idiot leftist. Like, do you want to just explain to me why you're not an well, idiot leftist I mean, leftist uh, two thirds of it are right. I just won't say which <laughs> two thirds. But, uh, <laughs> well, you know, uh, I, I am a scientist who studies global warming right. and I study it because it's real and it's really caused by people and I can see it in the data that I look at every day. It's there, it's all over the world and it, there's no question about it. The thing is we really shouldn't be talking about whether it's real or not, we should be talking about how to address it. And, and how to address it is by moving to a greener economy. That's exactly right. We have to burn fewer fossil fuels. That's it. Right. And there's all kinds of ways to do that. We yeah. have the technology, you know. I think we have the money too. We, we have the money to take the... anybody that would be hurt by the switch. Absolutely. We have the money to subsidize them for a certain amount of years until they can switch. Absolutely. We absolutely have absolutely. that money. And it would be good for the economy because we create new jobs. And uh, we'd feel build good about technology. the future for absolutely. our grandchildren. That's right. What's wrong with you, Rush Limbaugh? <laughs> Come with meet me in my van. <laughs> meet me in my van and let's talk about this. And I'm not some crazy leftist Hollywood actress either. <laughs>
I'd be happy to talk to Rush if he's going to show up. I'm, I'm ready. Party in my van. You're invited. Yeah. You're invited. We invited you. Uh, all right. Well, thanks for helping clear some of that up. It's Absolutely. amazing. And I'm glad that you used the word hope because it's not something that we feel a lot. So that's a nice perspective on it to at least like try to have that. Thank you. I, thank you. I work hard to be hopeful. Thank you. <laughs> thank, so you. Great. thank you. I feel honored that you would come oh, down and talk to me. Thank you so much. I thank really, really enjoyed it. It's so nice to meet you. Yeah, too.